We're taking a look at cervical cancer prevention on the show today with a view on adding a PVC vaccine to the immunization program for women. And with us, we still have Itoro Soro, a cervical cancer awareness advocate who lost his mom to cervical cancer four years ago, as well as uh, Dr. Obina Tony, an obstetrician and gynecologist on the show. Thank you, gentlemen, for being part of the program. And um, Itoro, I asked you a question earlier on. What you would say was the most memorable time uh, you had with uh, your mom? And what were those lessons you learned that you would want others to actually, uh, you know, benefit from to help them through the situation if it ever arises? Okay, thank you so much. Uh, what I like every woman, not just woman, because uh, I'm a man, and of course, when I lost my mom, it affected me. Okay, so what I like everyone to know is uh, they should all take, you know, their health seriously. We do not have to wait until when we are sick before we are taken to the hospital. Going for medical checkups, even when you're strong, you're fine, is actually very, very important. Because at that level, whatever might come in the future, of course, you'll be treated. Okay, so I encourage everyone, like, in my own case, I, I got a call from my family that, okay, mom was taken to the hospital. And of course, I, we were all waiting for her to come back. And the doctor said, no, that we are going to be admitting her. Eventually, I had to be with her. And I saw everything she went through, the pains and all that. Now, the point is for us, we don't know about that before that time. Okay, so that was because of maybe no awareness and all that. So the awareness thing is a very important thing because even as an advocate for the past two years that we've been doing this, we've seen countless women. In fact, if you ask me on the scale of one to ten, I tell you that just two have heard about this. And one, just one percent have actually been screened. So the awareness is very important, and which is why uh, we keep pushing every day, we keep pushing in our resources, everything just to ensure that these women know that there is such a thing like that. And of course, uh, to take preventive measure, we have the primary preventive measure, which is actually the vaccination, and also the secondary, which is uh, the screening. With these two measures, we're able to cope these minutes. So I encourage everyone to take uh, their health, seriously go for medical check even before you are sick. And of course, at that level, you're going to prevent whatever might come in the future. Thank you, Toro. Uh, Dr. Tony, uh, let's talk about the patients that you've had the opportunity to work with, uh, hopefully successfully, and some others, uh, regrettably, maybe they lost their lives. What would you say uh, were the lessons learned through these processes, and what should women start to look for and uh, you know, do as they are at the moment? Okay, thank you so much. I must start by saying that cervical cancer remains a big burden in this part of the world, Nigeria, Sub-Saharan Africa, and most developing nations. And the burden is so high and also regrettable because it's a preventable disease. I can confirm to you that average of three cases per week I've seen in clinic. And these women are women at the peak of their life. Women, which affects mostly middle-aged women, between 40, to 40, between 40 to 45 years, most women have completed their family size. That is, they must have finished their childbearing and then at the age of exploring life, only to be diagnosed of these manners. Uh, like last week, I had a patient, she's a 42-year-old 42, 42 woman, multi-para, multi that is, uh, she, had, uh, she has delivered four children and she presented in the clinic uh, on account of bleeding per vagina of one year duration and uh, abnormal vagina discharge. And when she presented for my examination, vagina examination, we discovered that she had uh, a mass from the uh, cervix, which has covered to third of the vagina. And from our history and everything, we made uh, and the examination we did, we made the diagnosis suspected cervical cancer. And we sent for histology. And for sure, from the histology, we know it's obvious, obviously cervical cancer. And the problem with this is that in advanced stage, it's difficult to treat. 
is difficult to treat. We can start chemotherapy, we can start the radi radiation therapy in advanced stage, uh, add the chemotherapy, but the prognosis are always poor. They are poor. So that's why we are campaigning that women should get screened. If these uh, precancerous lesions are detected early from screening, it can be treated, treated 100%, and one can be free from that. And the importance of screening, again, is that when you screen every three years, like I said, the purpose is to dictate if there's any precancerous lesion within the cervix. And if it's dictated, it can be treated. This uh, patient that presented to me last week, if she has had one screening in the last five years, 10 years, she wouldn't have that loss of this cervical cancer. Because cervical cancer does not come up overnight. It takes time. This human papilloma virus, which causes up to 99% of cervical cancer, is, is contacted surgically, is through surgical contact. Although, the, it, although not all of them persist, it's expected that within two years, it will result spontaneously, even when you are infected by this human papilloma virus. But they are the ones who call persistent infection. They are the ones that persist to cause cervical cancer. And if you, ha if you have screened in the last five years, this human papilloma uh, vi uh, virus, the precancerous lesion would have been dictated and this would have been prevented. Okay. So it's only persistent infection from disease to cause cervical cancer. And that is why we clamor that women should stay screened if you're not vaccinated so that it can be dictated early. Early action can lead to proper treatment. All right. Thank you. Dr. Tony, I'm still with you. And please, uh, viewer, if you have a question, uh, for Dr. Tony, you can please uh, call and be part of the conversation. Let's talk about this vaccination. Who can be vaccinated? When can that person be vaccinated? And uh, is there any point where someone can be said not to be, uh, uh, you know, uh, qualified to take the vaccination? Yeah, thank you. The, it's important to get the, vaccina the vaccination before one is surgery active. Of course, anything vaccine helps to prevent, not to treat. So the vaccination is important before one is surgery active. And the age of between nine years to some limitations so to 14 years, some to 15 years, but the vaccination can be extended to 26 years. But it most it is important, the earlier one gets it before being surgery active, the better for the vaccine to be effective. So this is the particular age for the vaccination from nine years to 15 years and can still be extended to 26 years. The key word there is that the earlier is gotten before one is surgically active, the better, since vaccine helps to prevent, not to treat uh, already existing disease, but to prevent it from coming up in the first place. So that's the, the age range. And for women who have passed the age of vaccination, and who has never been vaccinated, who advocate that they should be screened. The American Cancer Society recommends that screening should be done between 25 years to 65 years in women. They should be screened. And the screening, there are different uh, modalities for screening. If the screening is done with human papilloma testing, then that should be done every five years. Every five years. Then if the screening is done with uh, perhaps men, visual inspection uh, with iodine or visual inspection with acet acetic acid, this should be done every three years. This is the common one we do in this part of the world where resources may not be available as such for human papilloma testing with the PCR for human reaction. So that's uh, basically what uh, is recommended. We stay with you because we have a fellow doctor calling us from Edo State. Dr. Julius, we thank you for being part of the show. Please go ahead with your contribution. Dr. Julius. Okay, we lost the call. Hope he calls back before we wrap up with this segment, which is in just a few minutes. So uh, let's come back to you at this point in time, Mitoro. Um, in your advocacy, what have you learned? Uh, what, what have been the challenges? And how much are uh, women really uh, embracing the new knowledge that you seem to be uh, spreading around. Okay, thank you. Uh, before I answer that, I like to appreciate and acknowledge Google Collectives 
uh, who have actually been of uh, immense support uh, helping us to reach out to more women. So talking about the challenges and you know uh, some of the stumbling blocks to what we are doing, uh, basically uh, we have limited resources. Uh, the burden is actually so high, like so high, that everywhere we go to, we get to see women who have not heard about this. They, you know, you just you just telling them that there's something called cervical cancer, and they're walking away. Does not really make sense. So for us, we are putting up structures to not just advocate, to not just uh, tell the women about this, but of course, collaboration with medical facilities, with ministries, just to ensure that these values are put in place. Take, for example, I actually wrote a petition through the Change.org platform uh, seeking for inclusion of uh, HPV vaccination in our national immunization program. And I want to uh, thank the federal government who have rolled out uh, this particular vaccination that will be happening uh, in the month of September though on a temporary basis but of course we are still pushing that they should make it permanent so by the time these uh, vaccines and all these other screening modalities are made available at uh, the lower middle income primary health care facilities then the burden would have been reduced so talking about the challenges with resources with collaborations with partnership i think uh, we are going to be taking a step in the right direction and this menace will be called.